again, everyone. I'm Tom Dorado, and welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. 11th-ranked Oklahoma State clinched a bye in the upcoming Big 12 tournament this past week as the Cowboys split a pair of conference games. That sets up Saturday night's Bedlam rematch in the final game to be played in gallagher Ibarina Arena, as we know it anyway. A sweep of the Sooners would give OSU the second seed in Kansas City and improve our position in the NCAA tournament. We'll have all the highlights, first from Ames, then from the push-and-shove route of Colorado. You know, over the years, we've had some national and local celebrities join us on the show. And on this week's Off the Court feature, we'll relive some of those, shall we say, entertaining moments from days gone by. We'll have all this and a lot more for you. So you stay with us. We're back after this opening. Time out. The Eddie Sutton Show is brought to you by Jeep and your local Jeep dealers. Gallagher, I How about you guys? Got an extra couple? I need two. It's the fastest growing sport in the country. A sport defined by performance, determination, and teamwork. The pros know when conditions lean to the extreme, you gotta go with the performer. And the 66 team is driven to perform. Well, welcome back to the show. And Eddie, as we said in the tease, we had a couple of both ends of the spectrum kind of games. A tough one in Ames came home and ripped Colorado. We're right where we need to be now, still with a shot at the second seed. We didn't play as well at, at Iowa State, but Pfizer, their fine mm. player, boy, he is on a march to be in the player of the year what in our a league. Role he's on I now. think the last four games he's had 30 plus games in three of them and we held him to 29 and that was really <laughs> the difference in the game. They played well and we just didn't play as well as we had been playing, but we came back home and played a great game against Colorado. You know, we shot 50% from the the field. We held him to 30%. We only turned it over 10 times. They turned it over 20. We out rebound him. We did all the things that you need to do, and we really uh, jumped on the Buffaloes. A lot of people wondered how we were going to react coming back out of Ames because of the disappointment, a uh, little time off, then a tough practice that first one out. Re refocus the team. Yeah, I think so. We had a couple of good practices in preparation for uh, the University of Colorado, and uh, I thought our seniors really uh, displayed a lot of good leadership. And uh, as a result, if you practice well, you're going to play well. And now it's down to one last game in regular season, and we host the Sooners on Saturday evening at uh, 8 o'clock on uh, ESPN. And if we win that ball game, as you mentioned, uh, we get the second seed, assuming that Iowa State doesn't stub their toe at Baylor on Saturday when uh, they go to uh, play the Bears. And we'll talk a lot about that matchup with Oklahoma as the show goes on. But as painful as it may be, we'll do take a trip up to Ames, Iowa right now and take a look at some of those highlights. Oklahoma State taking on Iowa State. and You talk about a lot of hubbub in Ames about this. They call this the most important game this school has ever played. You know, assuming they win on Saturday, this will be the first league championship since 1945 or 46 when it was not even the Big 8 or the Big 7, mm -hmm. it was the Big 6. But I uh, mentioned there's Pfizer. And when he banks one in from the top of the key, you knew it wasn't going to be a good day for the Cowboys. They did a good job on, uh, on Desmond. And uh, early, uh, we hung in there and, and finally switched to a zone to change the pace. And we were down six at halftime, but I really felt good about our ball club. If we would just correct a few things, and uh, we just weren't able to do it. And we were playing catch up the rest of the night. We turned the ball over 18 times, which is you know, one of the uh, most uh, miscues we've had in a game for a long while. We're down by 12 with seven minutes left in the first half, and the uh, Cowboys make a nice run and get back and kind of stabilize things, and we'll see when we come back those two big misses to start the second half. Well, that was a nice give and go before uh, that shot there, uh, and we did fight our way back. Uh, I thought the two things, one, turnovers, impatient mm -hmm. on offense, not allowing our offense to get the ball down deep in the in the paint area because we felt like if we got it down there that we could, uh, you know, really hurt them because we were a little bit bigger. And that's Andre Williams getting a put back. And 
Andre uh, played okay in this ball game, but really played well against University of Colorado. That'll be one of the subjects, obviously, we cover in this show, but Andre's coming on now, and he's coming on at a pretty good pace. Well, if we're going to do well in the Big 12 tourney and uh, advance in the NCAA, I think he and uh, Keith both need to come off the bench and give us some, uh, some help. Don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but both those young men really gave us some quality time against Colorado. There you see the score. 37-31, you had to feel like you're still in it. Well, we had the ball to begin the second half. We ran a play right here for Desmond, and he doesn't get himself really under control. Frederick misses a couple of putbacks, mm. and uh, they come down, they score, now you're down eight. We come right back and we blow a layup. There's Pfizer going to the basket and getting two of his 29. He's in that magical zone right now where every time the ball leaves his I think he's ready for hand. the next level. <laughs> I think we're ready for him to go to the next level. There's See, that miss. There's yeah. a miss, and now they come back, and uh, we don't get back on defense. Brian falls down, and Nurse jumps up and hits one of his five trays, and you're down 11 points, and the crowd's going nuts, and uh, you're playing catch up, as I mentioned, the rest of the evening. Nice shot by Glendon. You talk about the 18 turnovers, and as disappointing as the turnovers were, probably half of those were unforced, weren't they? I would say at least half of them were, uh, you know, mistakes when really the defense had nothing to do with it, just a care careless play on our part, of, whether it's a pass or a walk. And that was uncharacteristic because this team has been pretty good in terms of ball security. Well, they've taken care of the basketball for the most part uh, all season long. Or, and, you know, if you don't do that, then you're not going to have the record we do. That's one of the things that you uh, beat yourself when you uh, turn that ball over. Uh, when, you're going to have turnovers because you're playing good teams. Our league's a tough league, and defense is going to force some mistakes. But you've got to eliminate those uh, self-made mistakes. Kept pack, you know, kind of packing it down in there and daring us to shoot it. We did from outside again. Well, the guy's been shooting the ball well. That's a nice put back by Brian. But the guy's been shooting the ball is uh, Glennon Alexander. Mm -hmm. There you can see me congratulating Larry. You, Stacy. You know Larry's done a great job with that ball club. I think they were picked in the middle of the pack for, in preseason, and and now the worst they're going to get is a tie for first place. And uh, he certainly is one that uh, should win the Big 12 Coach of the Year award. And I would think he would be a strong candidate for National Coach of the Year. Tremendous amount of disappointment in the locker room following that game, obviously because of all that was at stake. But you and your assistant coaches did a great job from that night on into, the, as I said, that practice two days later of bringing the spirits back up and kind of getting the guys refocused on what's still at hand. Well, you can't dwell on, uh, you know, a, a loss. Uh, you need to go back and, uh, and analyze why did we get beat and then go back to the practice court, get those things corrected and get on uh, with the next, next ball club that you're going to play, and that's what we did. Well, Colorado was a dangerous club. We talked about that prior to the game, and they came out and made things a little uh, tight in the first four or five minutes. Colorado's had some good wins this year. They beat Villanova and Cal Berkeley and Gonzaga. They beat uh, Iowa State. Uh, they beat the University of Oklahoma. Dangerous ball club. Uh, we broke out our orange uniforms uh, for the first time and probably the last time this season. Well, they're still wearing. undefeated. And they came out early and uh, just uh, really hit some big shots. And all of a sudden, I, we look up, we're nine points down. I call timeout. And, told our team, I said, you guys better get with it. This ball club is a dangerous team. Uh, you know, they've uh, got a guard, the Walls, who hit us for 34 points last year. That was one of the reasons we were able to beat them is the fact that uh, we held him to 14 points. And I thought uh, both Joe and Doug, who had uh, the defensive coverage most of the evening, both of them did a good job. Yeah, we were down to at nine, as you said, at uh, 14 to uh, five. And then all of a sudden, Mason, put on a show himself as he scored 12 straight points. Well, he did. He looked like an All-American, and uh, his, uh, his play uh, got him 19 points the first half and uh, got us a 16-point lead at halftime. We did a good job, and then you see Joe Atkins again with the quick hands, and this is in transition. Glendon knocking one home. If you can break him free in transition like that, now he believes he can hit every shot to go he puts up. And that's one thing we did. A, really a solid job in the first half of not letting Walls get to the rim and really create some problems in the paint for us. He is terrific in uh, being able to get into the paint area and either getting fouled or dishing the ball off when help comes or, or hitting that uh, mid-range jump shot. He's a very good basketball player. I would think he uh, 
Might not make first team all conference, but I would think he would be on the second team. Okay, Glendon gets in the zone now. He wants that ball. And there's a big difference. We had six trays up at Ames and come right back at home and double it up and hit 12, which ties a season high. That'll help win a lot of ball games right there. We've said it many, many times. <laughs> when the ball goes through the hoop, everything else looks better. How about that one going through the hoop? We got a little preview in the first half of what Andre Williams might mean to the Cowboys that night. He came on real big time in the second. Well, there was a big play with Jason Keat. Nice rhythm right there. Hey, nice got little, the ball. Uh, turn around, jump hook. Boy, they came in, and you looked over there as, as we see uh, the rough play that kind of signified the entire night. But I look over there, all your big men, your seniors, upperclassmen are sitting over there in foul trouble. Well, foul trouble, not only foul trouble, they fouled out uh, both Alex and, uh, and uh, Fred. That's why those two young players came in and did a good job for us. Well, you said it all year, somewhere down the line. And boy, you had a couple of these discussions, There's didn't you? There's one of the great officials we have in college basketball, Scott Thornley, and uh, we were talking about uh, how rough it was and uh, how long the game was taking. I've never been in a game that <laughs> lasted as long as that. When you have 52 fouls, I guess you're going to stop play uh, quite often. Scott came over at halftime and, and visited with us on the radio, not up live, but uh, before we went back on, and he said, hey, we got a couple of teams out there. Some of these guys don't like each other for some reason. Well, it was a rough and tumble game, and there's uh, Andre Duncan went home. Well, he is gaining in confidence, gaining in, I guess, you, gaining in the confidence that he knows the coaches have in him as well. Well, anyway, he played 19 minutes at 14 points and 9 rebounds. If you take uh, per minute played, he gets a lot of rebounds, and he is getting better. You know, the one thing that he uh, didn't do in this game that we'd seen him do in other games is fumble passes. Mm -hmm. And he had two or three pretty hard catches, and he was able to catch them and, and hold on to them. And as a result, he didn't make any dumb plays like that, but just not concentrating on catching the ball. We tell players, Read the ball all the way into your fingertips. I'm sure they say the same thing in baseball. Mm -hmm. or when you go to hit a baseball, follow that ball to, all the way till it hits your bat. Well, it's the same way in catching a basketball. Hands getting better. Rotation from the free throw line is getting better. Now, obviously a big win for the Cowboys. We're going to see just how big as we look at the standings heading into the final regular season weekend. And, boy, I tell you, it is still tight. Those six teams, I think, <laughs> all ought to be in the NCAA tournament. I think Missouri's probably on the bubble. I think the other five schools are essential to get in the big dance. Well, it's going to be a battle last weekend. Really won't know exactly who's playing whom as far as the Big 12 tournament is concerned. We'll talk about that in a little bit. As promised, you know, we have a real good feature for you. We've had some great guests over the years. We're going to let you see exactly what they brought to the show in years gone by. We'll do that when we return to the Eddie Sutton Show. As all of you know by now, we have a lot of fun on this show, and we have some very interesting guests. They join us each and every week. You just never know who might drop in. Well, Wade Pearson dusted off some old tapes this past week and put together his own guest list, a very unique list, to say the least. Eddie Sutton a four-time unbelievable winner at Oklahoma State. We talk about any something I said, we talk about shot selection, we talk about defense, we talk about the formula for success. Eddie Sutton equals success. Hi, Eddie. Tom, let me uh, take this opportunity on behalf of the OSU Educational Television Services to wish you and all of your fans and your players and your families a great and happy Merry Christmas and a great and prosperous and winning New Year. And now, back to Tom. <laughs> you might want to explain that. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. He lost a bet during Halloween here at Educational Television Service. That's Marshall Allen, the, the boss of this whole outfit here. And apparently he didn't think that 15 of his employees would show up in Halloween costumes on Halloween. Well, they did. He lost the bet. <laughs> and the bet was he'd wear an elf suit to the breakfast that he has each and every year, and he did, and I appreciate him coming on. I didn't think he'd do it. You tell Marshall, I thought it was very becoming. Welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. I'm Paul Splitarf, and Tom and Eddie will be right with you. I'd like to hear him talk about a little baseball sometime, and, and if they ever got to that, maybe they'd invite me. I'd like that. Good luck, guys. <laughs> Who let these guys in here? <laughs> 
birthday! What is this? Happy birthday to you! Now this is a first. This, this is, is a first. first. Yeah, this is Gather around before. here, fellas. Oh, <laughs> They didn't, you didn't know this, did no, we were kind of buying some time here until these guys came through the door. What a pleasant surprise to see all these guys. Yeah. And they were hoping that practice would be kicked uh, back Frank about two hours or so. No, no. no. Great looking cake. It's all due to my hard work and something had nothing to do with it. He should have a golf course. Sure. I mean, you think sure. you're going to put as, that as, as a big timer as he is and as uh, stature as he is, he should have a golf cart on campus. With his name on it. With his name on it and be able to park anywhere he wants on campus without getting a ticket. But Coach Sutton, so much in his coaching technique as I watch him and remember how Mr. Iba coached there, uh, cut off the same block. I think at the end of the year, Kansas City, you're going to see the Jayhawks and the Cowboys in the championship game. You can take that to the bank. <laughs> they both had a tendency to uh, yell a little bit at their players when they didn't do what they wanted them to do, which I thought was uh, very apropos. I spend my time yelling at the referees. The key to the three-point shot in college basketball are these variables. The height the ball is launched off the floor, the angle of elevation, the initial velocity, and of course we need the acceleration due to gravity and these equations of calculus. Well, and now, back to the Eddie Sutton. Eddie, baby, give me a call. I knew you when you didn't have recorders. I knew you when you weren't such a big superstar. Get a T.O., baby, and give me a call. From Gallagher Eyeball Arena for the Eddie Sutton Show, I'm Colleen Cassidy. That was a great piece. You, you know what? We have a list of people. That's just a small <laughs> slither of the amount of people who come on your show. Yeah, we've had a lot of... Uh, interesting folks that uh, have appeared on this show. Well, let me ask you, did you ever get that golf cart? You know, people might not know, that's Bill Frieder, a longtime friend, used to coach Michigan, and uh, his last uh, stop was at Arizona State, and at Arizona State and Rob Evans, mm -hmm. who now coaches there, they do have a golf cart, and they drive all over <laughs> the campus and park it anywhere they want to. I don't think Oklahoma State maybe is quite ready for that yet. You know, Frieder, did not say it on there, but he went on to say he has somebody, who, a chauffeur, who drives around. He doesn't drive the golf cart. He didn't when he was there. Now, he so. doesn't drive an automobile very well because I've <laughs> ridden with him before. <laughs> well, listen, we're going to come back and take the question of the week. We've got the notebook. That's all still ahead on the Eddie Sutton Show. This week's question from oakstate.com is brought to you by Southwestern Bell. If you have a question for Coach Eddie Sutton, log on to OSU's official athletic website at www.oakstate.com to participate in the Southwestern Bell Ask Coach Sutton contest. Norman, uh, good question. You know, we normally take 10 to 12 players depending on where we're going and, and uh, if uh, none of the guys have uh, any finals or any test they have to take so uh, and I think most teams probably travel about the same number. You don't think that could have been Norm Ben Stewart? <laughs> I started to say I'm happy my good friend Norm Ben Stewart <laughs> from <laughs> University of Missouri but I know he's out in Palm Springs playing golf every day. Go ahead tell the story though when we left Missouri you were going back we go out to the airport you said I bet Norm's just watching this game laughing at me. Yeah, I'm sure he was laughing about me sweating that game out there at the end when the Tigers were about to overcome us. He's probably adding up his scorecard playing golf. It's time for the notebook. I know that's a favorite part of this show for you. We're going to see uh, if your lamp will survive one more bounce, and it does. And our first item, actually all these items will have to do with the big night Saturday night. It's a senior send-off. Well, it's always a tough time, I think, for uh, seniors, uh, for their families, for the coaching staff, for fans to uh, say this is the last time that we'll ever see you play on your home floor. Uh, so there'll be some misty eyes on Saturday evening when we uh, play host Oklahoma. With as many as we had, we almost had to start the ceremony like a week in advance. You know, I've always had a tradition of starting all seniors, uh, but you can't do that when you have seven players unless I can get Kelvin oh, come to, on. to uh, allow us to do that. I don't think he will. let us do it at least one time <laughs> here. Our next item is get after it, and that has to do with what they're going to 
the workers, the Manhattan Construction Company, over at Gallagher Ivory Arena are going to do on Monday? Well, they're going to start uh, really escalating what uh, they have been doing. I think they've made remarkable progress, but after Wednesday's practice session, when we depart to go to uh, Kansas City mm -hmm. for the Big 12, we no longer will be able to practice in Gallagher Iva. Uh, when we get into the NCAA playoffs, we'll be practicing over at the Colvin Center or Stillwater High School, but we can't get back into the uh, arena because they're really going to start tearing off the, the roof inside. Gary Sparks going to give us a little guided tour for next week's show, and you, our fans and viewers are going to get a chance to see what's going to go on inside as Gary tells them step by step what to expect. And our third item, this is a tough situation here. I know you, this is something you can't do in a matter of seconds. A memory, a couple of memories for you from Gallagher Hall slash Gallagher Well, Hall. I have so many fond memories. As a player, I think uh, two things jump out at you. When we beat uh, the University of Cincinnati, uh, when they had Oscar Robertson, one of the great guards to ever play basketball, and when we beat Will Chamberlain, the University of Kansas, and uh, one of the great centers. So, And then as a coach, the great games here with Kansas and Oklahoma and countries half-court shot against Missouri. So it's been a lot of fun uh, playing in Gallagher, I, uh, Gallagher Ive Arena, and also coaching there. So Okay, now we can focus on Oklahoma. Always a big game, and it'll be even bigger Saturday night. I tell you, the Cowboys, Sooners, no matter what the records, it's going to be a war. Bedlam. And be there. <laughs> 8 o'clock tip-off. Be there early for all the festivities that will take place prior to the game. That's all the time we have for this week's show. For Eddie Sutton, our entire crew here at Educational Television Services, Tom Dorado. Goodbye, everybody.